Okay, so we just did a histogram and frequency distribution uh, by hand, and now I'm gonna do it again in Excel. Basically the same problem. So uh, here's the problem. Create a frequency distribution and histogram in Excel from the following ages. Same problem as before, but now we're gonna do it in Excel. Um, I also have a tutorial on this, but I figured another example won't hurt with a video. So I open up Excel and I entered in all of the ages, although I see one is wrong now. 2012, 45, 19, 28. Um, and when you enter the ages in, you can do things like check how many you have. So there are 16 ages and we have 16 rows here. So I entered them all in. Um, one thing I wanna do, you don't have to, but I, I like to sort this data. So if you go to the data tab and choose to sort it, let's highlight the whole column A. Here's the sort buttons. Um, sometimes they'll be a little farther over. So if you're having a Mac or something, you might do a search for a sorting. Um, but here I can just click this quick sort, smallest to largest, that's what I want. Um, so you can see the minimum 12, the maximum 48. I forgot to put my headers, so I'm gonna put those in now. So I'm gonna highlight row one, right click, and just go down to insert. It'll automatically insert a row. And up top here, I'm gonna put their age in years. And then we wanna make a frequency distribution. We need to set up the bins for Excel. So I'm gonna um, use the word bin. You could also use the word class. Excel calls them bins. Um, and if you look back at what we did on the by hand, you still kind of need to do this work to figure out, you know, where do you want to start and what's your bin width? So we'll have a bin width of five and we'll start at 10. And what Excel wants you to enter is the upper value of each bin. So I've already calculated those, but the first upper, upper class limit would be 14. And then we would go by fives. So 14. And then 19, and I, I could just type the rest of them in. It wouldn't take me very long. Um, but if I had hundreds of them or something, I won't, because usually bins we have you know, eight to 15, so it's not that many. But if you didn't, if the calculations were harder, you could highlight the first two cells and then go to the bottom right corner, click, drag down, and you could see the total there, 29, 34. I want to get down to 48. There we go, 49, excuse me. So those are my bins, and now we're going to use our data analysis tool pack. So if you haven't installed this, um, I have a, a tutorial on that. So you'll need to go to your data tab. Uh, there you go. Where is mine? It disappeared. Um, I just did this whole thing and I forgot to record it. So I'm redoing it. Um, and now my, I don't see my data analysis. Tool pack, it's gone. Um, can I click there and see what that is? Oh, there it is. So I don't know why it's not showing up with the name for it. Usually it says um, data analysis. Maybe my window is too small or something. Huh. Normally, oh, normally it says data analysis right there. You can see it, but. Um, it doesn't, for some reason, it stopped. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna do a histogram. So if you don't have the data analysis tool pack, um, it should say right there, data analysis. If you don't have that, you need to install it. And it's just one of the add-ins in Excel. So um, there's a tutorial in the chapter two, uh, I guess week two materials, uh, I think it's called data analysis tool pack tutorial, something like that. Okay, here we go. So we want histogram, we're gonna say okay. And the trick here is just to you know read the read what it wants, basically. It wants an input range and a bin range. So that's these first two columns. And when you choose those values, it wants to know, you know, are you gonna include the labels or not? And that's a choice that you're making. So if we highlight the labels on top, ages and bin, then we want to include the labels here. Um, then it has the output options. Where do you want to put the histogram? So uh, that's the output range. You could use a new worksheet or a new workbook. 
Um, and then what kind of graph do you want? Do you want a Pareto? Do you want a cumulative percentage? Or do you just want a chart output? We're going to use the bottom one. Okay, so our input range goes from A1 down to A17. And usually it's good to tab out of here. And that brings me into the bin range option. And again, I'm going to go from B1 down to B9. I could also type these in, but it's much easier to just click and drag. Notice it put the dollar signs in front. That means it doesn't want to change those values if you were to drag this over. Those would stay the same. Okay, do we have labels? Yes, I included A1, which is a label. So I want to say yes, I'm using my labels. Now I want to go, which, where's my output range? When you do this, you have to actually either tab in here or click into that box and tell it where you want it to go. I want it to go here in this D1. I'm just going to click right there, D1. And what I want is a chart output. And I'm just going to say OK. And it's going to generate my histogram for me. Um, that's the histogram, except a couple of things about the histogram that we want to know. Um, I want this to be bigger. So I'm just going to make it bigger, make it easier for us to see. Um, a histogram is just a bar graph, but the bars should touch. And you can see here the bars are not touching. So a couple of things I want to fix and clean up. I want to fix my labeling. I want to fix my class width down, my class boundaries down here. I want to get rid of that guy, so I usually just delete it. Um, we don't have a more anyone in the more category, so if, if we had people older than 49, they would fall into this more category. We don't, so I'm going to get rid of it. Just delete, delete, and that'll clear this off from the graph. Um, in my bins, I want to go from 10 to 14. Unfortunately, Excel is going to think that's a date, October 14th. So I could undo that. Well, I'm still going to go 10 to 14, but I'm going to go back home, click on, click out of here for a second. So it thinks it's a date. So I'm going to go to number here and I'm going to change it to text. So again, I just went to opened up this number option and I changed it to text. And now it's some weird. 43387, I don't know what that is, but I'm going to type in 10 to 14, and it's going to change it down here in my graph, 10 to 14. And the next one, I don't think it's going to make it a date, because it would go from 15 to 19, and there's no date that does that. So it just does it for me, 20 to 24. I'm going to do this all the way down. Maybe I can grab two and drag it down. Nope, doesn't like that. Maybe grab one, drag it down. Nope. So you got to do this manually, 25 to 29, 35 to 39, 40 to 44. And you can see they're changing on the graph as I do this, 45 to 49. OK, good. So now I'm going to move myself out of the way over here. I want these bars to touch. So just pick any bar and double click going to open up some options over here. In particular, one is called the gap width. That's the distance between the bars. I want that to be zero. So I just got that all the way over. Boom. OK. Now, I can double click on these bars or single click on them and get one bar at a time. You can see I'm highlighting one bar at a time. Or I can double click, click off, and double click on them again, and all of them highlight. So for all of them, I want them to have an outline, and I want it to be black. So now you can see the outlines between the bars. Um, I also want to change my headers here. This isn't just bin. This is their ages in years. Um, that is the frequency. And then it's kind of weird this is called a histogram. I mean, it is a histogram, but it's a histogram of what? Well, here it's people's ages. I don't know. Maybe we call it, I don't know students maybe people were everyone's ages that we were talking about were students and now it's the students and these are their ages um you can see we're going by halves over here you would you wouldn't generally have a half a student so i can double click over here right click on it let's see vertical values vertical axes 
so let's see if I can find that. So usually you, um, I, you know, I always have to fiddle around with these things a little bit. There should be a way to change those values and just have it go one, two, three. Um, text options, let's see. It's not that important for these. I'm gonna leave it for a minute just so this video doesn't drag on too long. Um, but I can also individually click on each of these guys by themselves. Let's see, I think I can, there's one. And then right click and I can change the color. So I could go orange and then right click, go up to fill red, and then click on the next one, fill, let's go orange. Um, you know, you could change the colors. It makes it a little easier to see what's going on. Sometimes it makes it too bright. You can see I'm, I'm going all out here. Um, but I'm just using the standard colors down here. So no big deal, just finish it off. Um, light blue and the last one's blue. So, you know, that changes the, the look on it quite a bit. It makes everything stand out a little better. Um, I could click on this axis here and uh, alignment. So I could add an angle in here. So I could go down and I'm just decreasing this angle here and you can see what's happening with the values are kind of going at an angle. If I go the other way, they'll tilt the other way, but I like them like that, so that's nice. Um, and then you can fiddle around in here. Um, you, know, you could have had the text rotated all the way a certain degree. I'll leave it horizontal, horizontal, or you can go rotate it vertically like that. And then if I did that, I might make this a little bit taller so that you can see it better. That works nicely too. Um, you can change the size. So, you know, you can fiddle around in here. If I wanted to add some shadowing in, I could change these things a little bit, just see what happens. Uh, soft edges, I don't know. You can fiddle around with it. Um, ooh, look at that. <laughs> um, oh, that would be bad because we want these guys to touch. So I was, I was not, that was not good, whatever I just did. So I'm just gonna undo that. There we go. No soft edges for a histogram. Okay, so that's our histogram. Um, while we're here, I'm going to do the descriptive statistics. So it just takes a second. So, and it involves the same thing, the data analysis. So I'm going to go back up here, home, over here to data. And again, it should say data analysis here. Um, I don't know why it doesn't, but we're going to click on that. And I'm going to do the descriptive statistics which is the topic of chapter two, by the way, Excel will do most of it for us. So I'm just gonna say, okay, it pulls up my menu. Again, my input range, I'm gonna highlight all that, including my labels at the top, but I'm not gonna highlight my bins, just my data. Click on labels and the data here is grouped in a column. So that's why columns is chosen there. Tell it where to put it. Uh, put it right below this, say right here. I can click on one cell and it'll just fill in all the cells that it needs from there. And then what we want here is we want the summary statistics. This confidence level thing we're gonna do, we can use that in chapter eight later. So we're gonna use descriptive statistics again later. Okay, so I do my input range, labels, output range, click in there, click on that cell, summary statistics, say okay. And if it doesn't work, just do it again. It's not a big deal. Um, usually you can't see everything here, so I have to highlight these two columns, D and E, and I go over to the right to get those outward pointing arrows. I can double click. It'll open that up to, um, so it'll fit everything, and you can see it fills in my header up here for me, age and years, and then my mean, standard error, I don't deal too much with, the median, the mode, the standard deviation. I'm guessing it's a sample standard deviation because, um, it has a sample variance below and I'm just noticing I'm getting different results than I got last time I did this. So I'm wondering if maybe I had messed up one of my numbers um, in terms of my data entry, but I'm not gonna worry about it now. So if I forgot to, a number or I entered a number in wrong, um, one, three, two, uh, yeah, remember our original one didn't have anything in this 35 to 39. So I think 
I might have entered in this 38 incorrectly. It might have actually been a 28. So if you're doing it on your own, it, it's not exactly the same problem as the one I did um, from the from the uh, previous video. And one final thing, I can round these values to like one decimal place. Um, number and there's my decimal rounding. Um, why one decimal place? Because my data goes to whole numbers, so I would round my statistics to one decimal place. And you can see um, some of these things we're not we aren't going to use the skewness, but we are going to use the range, the min, the max. Um, sometimes we would want the sum, and then we know there's 16 of them. So again, just reiterate what I just said. I actually, when I copied the data, typed it in, one of the values was off. I think it's the 38, because remember, this, this bin was originally empty. But um, with this set of data values, here's my frequency distribution and my uh, descriptive statistics. Um, good. Thanks. I hope that helps. Uh, sorry to get the, well, I hope that helps. Okay. Thanks.